welcome to Getting to the Truth in This Art. I am your host, the prestigious, the talented, the robust Rob Lee. See, I gave myself superlatives. Uh, I want to welcome musician, founder of Love the Love Groove Music Festival, a film score for Under Armour, Bloomberg Philanthropies, Visit Baltimore, and Maryland Public Television. Please welcome John Tyler. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, glad to be back with the king of the podcast of Baltimore. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yes. So welcome back to you. Uh, uh, I mean, two times in about, what, six, seven months? What are we doing here? It's, it's almost like it's inside baseball or something. Yes, 100%. This is, so, this is how, before you uh, continue, this was like my favorite interview I think I've done. Uh, like really, really. Yeah. And I'm glad you had me back. And I hope to you continue going back throughout the years. Well, thank you. This is this has been great and always uh, welcoming friends of the show back and, you know, just love seeing like your journey and seeing you pop. I was like, there's John again. Get him out of here. So, <laughs> so We've had so much John. But um, with, with that, I, I want to talk about um, what have been your, your highlights of, of 2021, because we already had that kind of introductory conversation. And I'll definitely tag it for for this episode for people to check and get the full double impact version of John Tyler. But really, what are the highlights of 2021 and what do you have in store for 2022? We're getting right into it. Man, this year has been probably my best year. I think I've been working so hard for like a year like this to happen. Like right off the back, the year started off with the Under Armour stuff. And then we had the Women's Love Groove, which ended up becoming like a huge success. Didn't even expect that to happen. It was like, had everyone on the buses. Uh, And then, oh my gosh, what else happened? I I, I got in a, I was in a Hulu commercial. Uh, <laughs> I was also in an HBO. I'm in an HBO show. I did that like about a couple months ago. Uh, then the fifth love group happened. I got to deal with Center Stage and PNC Bank. So much, really, so much has happened. And now I'm about to end the year with uh, my, my listening party. Um, but by the time y'all hear this, the listening party will pass. But yeah, a lot has happened. But I would say those are definitely the highlights of the year. So oh, performing at Firefly Festival, that was a big highlight. I got to see Megan Thee Stallion in person. She had like the biggest bodyguards you would ever see. <laughs> a, a, a fellow Aquarius was uh, was Tame Impala there? Yeah, I saw. Oh my gosh, Tame Impala was the best the best show I ever seen. I was talking to one of the, uh, the production people in his team. They were saying like his set alone cost three million dollars to put on. Wow, which, is, which was insane. But being there, I it, I see why. I literally see why. It was uh, crazy. I yeah. was I was mad envious. He and I share a birthday, so it's always uh, uh, January twentieth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's eighty six though, and uh, <laughs> uh, you know, so it's you know, you're off by years. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's just great to see, and it's just great to see those opportunities present themselves. So, what you you for for twenty twenty two? Are you looking at like more of the same? Are you looking to what is that one thing that you're like, all right? This is going into 2022, because as we're recording this, we're in like essentially December. Uh, as we're recording this, what is that thing that pops in your head of I, uh, 2022 will be a success if I do more of X? What is What does that look like for you? So now I'm, I'm really tapping into me being a solo artist because 2020 and 2021 was really me working on Love Groove and really me working on other people's projects. Um, so now I'm coming, I'm literally stepping out the gate of 2022. Like I'm going on my first tour. I got booked in New York, Philly, DC, uh, Baltimore and Silver Spring, uh, all at the same time. I'm like, okay, this is actually a tour. Uh, so I'm starting the year off with a tour, really just becoming an artist and really dive into my craft. But of course, doing a lot of other deals with like really big foundations so I can make love group, but it was meant to be like an actual festival i would love to have like a ferris wheel and like the full-on carnival yeah. and really have nothing but local artists and be able to pay them uh, you know more than what they asked for it like that's that's definitely a big goal but there's so much i think 2022 is to come because so much happened this year so i can only imagine next yeah i i think that's it's an important thing and i like that you you keyed in on that that one piece of well, amongst many pieces of having it here i think you know, the notion of having a festival or any event with Baltimore artists in this area, that's something that's really needed. And I think 
you see it. And I think people are becoming more aware of it, right? Uh, that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be leaving, like, you know, help foster the talent and help foster the community where you're at and then leave and do whatever you need to do or what have you to move your thing along, but make sure home, if you will, is set up because those are the, uh, I think in many instances, those are the evangelists for what yeah. you're doing. Those are the people that are like your day ones. And it's like, when you're when you're you leave your day ones, some people are still rock with you, but you have some people give you that weird side eye, like, all right, but you left though. <laughs> no, that's a fact. That's a that's a fact. So, like I said, last year has been a really big year in terms of growth for you. Um, in terms of the the background stuff in 2022, you're talking about just more growth of you as an individual artist. So speak on how do you seek out opportunities and, and how do you prioritize one opportunity over another if they're competing? I, I think this is going to definitely be a jewel and a gem for people who are trying to get that that real exposure and that real like opportunity. Well, truth be told, I, I, I'm really good at networking but i'm also really scared at networking like my anxiety is crazy but really just talking to people is uh that's the number one way opportunities you know come my way and just being involved in everything because the for the majority of most things uh big things happen because of word of mouth like you know like say a big company is coming down they need like a black artist to play to write some songs they're gonna ask you know who who's the, who's popping right now who, who's really involved and like john tyler like that's literally how things happen just word of mouth yeah. so really just trying to be get your name to everywhere as much as possible uh and like fighting you know the anxiety of being scared to talk to people and I also do I, I do a lot of research like people don't realize that behind the scenes i am emailing every day for like four hours straight trying to find new opportunities of uh, reaching out to people giving them giving proposals that like that's literally what i do every single day for like the last two years yeah. like <laughs> so it's, it's it's really deep um but yeah that's how i seek out opportunities you had a second part of the question i actually forgot what it was no yeah yeah uh so how do you prioritize them though like let's say if you have something that that is a competing thing and it's like you can't be in two places at once unless you found a way to clone yourself i, I don't know <laughs> you're, you're a very productive individual so, so how does that work <laughs> a little dr manhattan action right there uh i mean it really depends on because i know uh i had a situation where i had a gig that was like paying me maybe like $200, but I also promised to be at my friend's birthday party at the exact same time. It was like, what do I pick? Um, but I, I really take uh, relationships to the full of it. Mm -hmm. I, I respect them. So I always choose like friends over money because in the long run, you know, my friend is going to be there, you know, forever. forever. Um, so it really depends on the, the really the, how big the opportunity is. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty quick on things. So like if someone gave me like a music assignment, I'm doing it within an hour and I send it, I'm really quick on everything. And I like to get done, just get things done as soon as I get it. Because I remember back in when I was in school, I was, uh, I was in school full time. I had two jobs and I was doing music on the side. So like literally as soon as I was doing all my homework as they gave the homework, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, going to work and I'm also working on songs at my, like I was literally, I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of built a little different. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's that approach. Um, people would ask me, like, how do you do all of these podcasts? How do you do all these interviews? And I was yeah, like, because you got like four podcasts, like a whole bunch of different things. I'm a, I'm a crazy person. But yeah, it's um, it's it, I, I, I use this idea called stealing time. Like if it might be like some people you connect with on a different level, it's like, oh, we're friends now. And it's like, yeah. all right, if I'm going to have lunch, let me have lunch with this person or what have you. So I'm doing that activity with someone else. So it's like fellowship, it's networking and I'm feeding my face. Or um, <laughs> if I'm like working out or what have you, and I need to do some research on a, um, a podcast, like, a, like someone I'm going to interview, I'll look up other interviews that they've done to get a temperature on what they're about while I'm like doing my fitness thing, instead of like purely sitting there for that research. Like I've already got the questions together, but I need to get a temperature on what is this <laughs> guest like? Are, do they have a good sense of humor? Are they more dry? Are they shy? Things like that. So I know how to measure myself to match their energy. Yeah. That goes into what you were asking me about earlier, by the way. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. <laughs> so, That's crazy. 
so in this one, this is this is one I just added. You didn't get this one. This is a brand new question. Um, and I think we're on the same page when it comes to an anxiety thing. I, I I get that as well. If I could wear sunglasses all the time, but my boy would say my eyes already <laughs> disappear. See, like they're gone. See, look, boom. My boy tells me my eyes disappear when I take my glasses off. I was like, you go. So. <laughs> but, but but tell me about tell me about perception. Does does how you go into an opportunity, like um, the energy that you have going into an opportunity, does that affect the results in your experience? Like, for example, let's say you, you go into a gig and you've had like a bad day. Do you play different when you had a bad day? Oh, my goodness. Tell me about that. This is crazy because Saturday. Oh, my gosh. This one beat me up. I, I did a gig with the Station North people. And uh, right before the gig happened, I got... Uh, this whole situation with a band I'm in happened and I ended up the band ended up splitting like right before the gig and I and it was bothering me so much I literally got on stage and I bombed like so I bombed really hard yeah. and I in the middle of it I knew I was bombing and <laughs> it was an hour set and this is like 10 minutes in I was like oh my god I'm bombing so hard right now I just wanted to like get off stage and just walk home but like, I just took a breath. Like I'm still playing. I still, I took a breath. I was like, and just kind of let it go. And then the rest of the set ended up being good. But like, yeah. no, like your mindset, I'm really come to learn that your mental really affects how you do things and how you come across to people and people pick up on energies. Mm -hmm. Like, like my friend told me like, uh, she, she was like, what, what was wrong? Like you didn't seem like yourself when you was playing. I was like, wow, that was noticeable. Like, yeah. Like, so, uh, yeah, so my mental does, whatever I'm going through does highly affect my performance and pretty much everything as That's, much as I try to hide it. We, we're not good at it. You, you know this, right? Yeah. We're, we're just not good at it. Like we think, oh, we're good. We can compartmentalize it. No one will ever notice. And it's like, you know, you've been grinding your teeth this whole time, right? Like, huh? <laughs> my no, bad. That's a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. There, there, there have been some instances uh, on my other one of my other podcasts where me and my uh, my ex co host we were just having just issues and you know when you're collaborating with someone and and I would imagine it may be some similarities musically but you you have the notes but I think if you're doing a a, a jam session or something on those lines where mm -hmm. you're doing improvisation and my other podcast is improvisation so there's an instance where you might step on each other and you know you kind of tear out what a real like you really are stepping on me versus all right let me just move to the side and give you give you your 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 opportunity to do your thing yeah. and i listen to those episodes where you know but leave it in if i want to get an idea like what happened here this went wrong and it's like 10 minutes left in the episode and it's like yeah i was trying to wrap it up i got stepped on like a lot and my energy you could hear it you could hear the shift and i was like oh that's what that sounds like <laughs> oh wow and then his energy was different in the following episode because he recognized that he stepped all over me and it was just like it was just bad so i think ultimately it kind of goes into i think the a conversation i had with um elisa milan about um the empanada lady about um when she's making her food or what have you whatever you're putting into it she's like her energy has to be good she can't be upset she can't be sad when she's making empanadas it's this it's this transfer of yeah. like your energy if you're like now if you're like mad you play better when you're mad let's get it but if it's just like look i'm in a spot emotionally right now i'm going to be playing some sad guitar like <laughs> you know that's, no, that's a fact yeah it ultimately depends on what you do because i remember i was listening to i was listening to uh the new mark ronson podcast on the fader and he, he was interviewing rico nasty and she was saying like she can't go in the studio unless she is mad which is like, I, I could have worked like that, but you know, but then the type of music she makes, like the rage, trap, punk music, that yeah. makes sense. So, mm -hmm. but for us and for your friend who's a culinary, yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think also it's like, if I'm in a spot where I'm feeling like just really, really good mentally, as far as I think each one of the things, and, and maybe this still applies, like what, what you're playing versus the role that you're in. Like if you're front and center, that may be have a different requirement for you if you're like supporting someone as more of a, a, a part of an ensemble, right? So yeah. 
if I'm doing, let's say this podcast, I need to be on and engaged and caring about like the, the actual conversation, or it's just, I'm not giving, I'm not giving the guests their due. You know what I mean? Now, if I'm doing like the other podcast where I need to really be on and be able to think on my feet because I'm improv it's like, I need to have a clear mind. I can't be preoccupied by something because it's performance. That's really what it is. No, that's a fact. So I've seen some videos of you practicing with some new instruments. Uh, speak on the importance of picking up those new techniques and <laughs> how has your creative process changed over the last few years? Cause you, you know, you were talking about earlier, y'all there emailing. It's almost like y'all was making three beats a day for five summers. You <laughs> out there sending 30, 30 emails a day for four hours a day. So, so, so tell me about the, the instrument side of it, the, the practice side, the picking up those new techniques side of things. I love new techniques because it helps expand your mind and helps you think from a perspective you wouldn't normally think of. Like I'm a guitar player, played guitar, you know, forever. And this year I started playing saxophone and truth be told, the way I see sax players play and the way I heard it, I thought it was going to be easy. It is not easy at whatsoever. Not, not easy instrument at all. And I realized it was, uh, how much of a breathing thing it is, which I, I knew it was a breathing thing, but I didn't realize, I didn't know how much of a breathing thing it was. And it really has helped me control my breath and really changed my perspective of how I, you know, play music now, like yeah. learning the sax, like, cause it's completely different, a completely different world from guitar. So, so I think it's very important. Yes. Yeah, the sax things. guy is listening to this podcast. It's like, yeah, I told you. Mm. <laughs> that is a fact. That is a fact. <laughs> th th those brass instrument players, they are really I mean guitarists are cocky, but those brass instrument players, they the horn, they are some cocky dudes. No, that's a fact. Because I've been heavy on my New Orleans stuff recently. I've been watching Trinity, Oh, yeah. And I was like, yo, look. <laughs> I never wanted to deal with those. It's like, look, they they are outplay you, outbreathe you, and take your girl. And it's like, look, this is <laughs> this is terrible. All in three seconds. Oh yeah. my goodness! In three notes. Uh, so think about back when, because I don't know if I asked you this before. Think about when you first noticed you had interest in music. What was that? Those maybe that first tune that you learned. And what were some of those first teachers that, that you may have had, like that had an influence on you as a, uh, as a performer or uh, why you maybe picked up the guitar? Fun fact, my first guitar teacher was Dan Ryan from the Super City Band. Oh, wow. I don't know if you're familiar. Super City, they're like really popping right now. They're based here. They're like a psychedelic pop rock band. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, check them out if you're not familiar. Uh, Super City was... Yeah, Dan Ryan, uh, he really showed me the ropes. Uh, and I was very kind of cocky back then, too. Like, I just said, like, I was really on some, nah, I don't need to learn jazz. You know, I'm good with Because at the time, I was really heavy on rock stuff. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm the best as it is. In reality, I was really trash. Uh, that's just, <laughs> that's just being then, a New Yorker. That's just being a New Yorker. <laughs> no, that's, that's a fact. That is a fact. <laughs> but, like, my first song that I, that I recall... Actually, I recall the first song that I took notice was uh, a Black Eyes P song. Um, it's getting hot in here. Because mm -hmm. it was, it just felt like something I would make at the time, even though I didn't know how to make music at that time. It just, because the way the chords were in the beat and how they, that's, if you really go back and listen to that song, it's like four different genres in one. Mm -hmm. Like Black Eyed Peas was good at that. But the first song that I remember playing, learning how to play uh, was actually the first song I ever performed was uh, I Love Rock and Roll by Joan somebody. I Joan forgot last name. Yeah, Joan, Joan Jett. Yeah, I played that at the fifth grade talent show. That was my first ever performance. I had a little band with Ishmael Scott, Kylie Powell, Jalen Harris. It's crazy I remember the names because uh, I have not spoken to them in like the last decade. <laughs> uh, actually, the, other than Ishmael, Ishmael was cool. He goes to Morgan too. Uh, shout out, shout out. Yeah. Go Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bears. But yeah, that's, 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 that's as far as I remember. Yeah. Okay. So I got a couple more questions before I get to those rapid fire questions that I hit you on with earlier. Um, so what, what skill 
or personal attribute do you attribute to to being successful? Like when you go into something and I, I, I know you touched on networking earlier and kind of having that follow through and working behind the scenes, how important that is. But what would you say that key skill that maybe someone could work on to kind of yield maybe better results for them on something that's like overlooked? You know, this is going to sound ridiculous. Spend it. But as I've been talking to so many artists and I actually had a conversation with Terrell Brown today, who you, I'm going to introduce you to, you should definitely have him on this. Um, but so many people lack sleep. And truth be told, I get good sleep. Like, I'm in bed every day at 1030 and I wake up every day at six. Literally, that my whole schedule is like that. And really good sleep really has changed, I would say, everything. And I could be like my energy is way better. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. So, yeah, really. I know that sounds crazy, but like. No, it doesn't. I do sleep. a similar thing. I do a similar thing. It's like same hours, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, see, you know. Yeah. But the difference is I'm a, a thousand. You're like 12. So you need less sleep. Than I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. Uh, yeah, okay. Cool. 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 You're actually a super talented <laughs> musician. I'm just, I got with a microphone, but I get it. I get it. Um, hey, I don't even think I could do this. Like this is an art, like be able to talk and like keep a conversation going for like an hour to two hours. Like that's insane to me. Actually, it was funny. I had that um, that same comment from um, I kind of took this uh, expiring podcaster on and I kind of been giving him some tips and coaching him and all of that stuff. And he was very like celebratory and uh, mm -hmm. he acknowledged that he's like, you can keep a conversation going with like it was somebody I had on that. They had nothing. They were giving me nothing. And I was getting gold. <laughs> I was like <laughs> squeezing as much toothpaste out of the tube as I could. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good analogy. Oh, yes. Uh, so is there a cover that you like to perform live? Um, what is it? And, and why would you why did you add it to your set of like, you know, what, guys, a little free bird for y'all or whatever <laughs> the song you just pull out? No, that's that's fire. I, you know, truth be told, I don't perform much covers. I kind of uh, I've actually been trying to get into it because I've been watching at Firefly, when I was at Firefly, all the big artists were doing like covers and I was like, oh, okay. And more people sung along to the covers than they actually did with their song. I'm like, maybe I really should get into covers. But truth be told, I'll just be getting on stage and winging it. Like... That's what I do sometimes. Yeah, but if I had to perform a cover, uh, a cover uh, definitely some Stevie Wonder songs because his songwriting is ridiculous. Same with Herbie Hancock. Do Sir Duke. <laughs> oh, that's that's a classic. Or for trolling purposes, I promise you, if this happens, I will bring my partner, I'll bring my girlfriend to this whole situation because we have a love-hate relationship with this song. But I'm like, look, man, one of my friends is going to perform it. We should do it. You met him. Uh, do, uh, uh, what is it? Um... <laughs> Jungle Fever. <laughs> oh my goodness! Because <laughs> we make fun of that song so much. It was like, what is that? Classic. <laughs> he is white girl. She's black boy crazy. He's white girl hazy. Come on, now. <laughs> let us be real. You know, is that the lyrics? I actually don't even remember Those the lyrics. lyrics. <laughs> oh my goodness. 1991 was a really interesting year. I did a review on it recently, and we talk about that song a lot. I have uh, to go back. I remember the beat. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember that lyric beat of the song. Because it's like, doot, 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 doot. It's like, hold on. <laughs> Look, it's great. Um, that was my daughter. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of what um, Sir Duke sounds like, too. Uh, my girl says, like, this is circus music. She's like, it's great, but it's also cir circus music. You know what? I see that. I 100% I see that. I 100% see that. So if you get your carnival situation, your first wheel, you've got to play Sir Duke. No, that's a fact. And I can get, uh, you know, Rufus. Yes. <laughs> get Rufus. Yeah. 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 Get his whole band, the whole brass. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be on saxophone. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Last question I have before I get to the rapid fire. Um, and I think I know the answer because you touched on lyrics, but let, let's, let's, let's hear this one. Um, to you, what is more important, good lyrics or good melody in a beat? Oh my God, that's, that's tricky. That's tricky. I know. 
Good it's hard questions here. We asked the hard questions. So it's like, <sighs> mm, all right. So <laughs> or, or already <laughs> even for you, already even for you. All right, let That's me say, thing. yeah, it depends who it is because like artists like Eminem, like his beats be sometimes trash, but his lyrics be on a whole different level. Mm-hmm. But then you got artists like uh, Playboy Cardi or even like James Brown, like some of James Brown's lyrics, he just yelling in the mic. And there's really no lyrics to it. It's just a good feeling. And the beat just goes crazy. It just makes you want to dance. So it really depends. But then you got artists like Kendrick Lamar, who has insane lyrics, yeah. insane beats. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Out of this world. Um, but if I had to choose one, truth be told, I'm going to go with a good melody and beat. Because I, I listen to you know melodies and beats before i listen to lyrics yeah like actually uh fun story i was actually uh recently like a couple of weeks back i was listening to a song called telephone by erica badu mm-hmm. and li- been listening to this song for the, like the last decade great song beautiful chords and i was listening to it on youtube and one of the comments like someone commented all the lyrics i was like you know what I actually never <laughs> listened to what she was talking about and was reading the lyrics. And it turned out the whole song is about something completely different from an actual telephone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, beats, beats all day. Well, that's, that's what I was kind of expecting as, as a musician, you yeah. know, like that's, that's the thing I'll have you uh, and kind of the same comment you had about the CB one. It's like, I never heard that lyric. And it's like, Oh, well, there you go. I, it, it's kind I'm kind of in the middle. Um, if I, I, I go, I go instrumental first. I go, I go music first. Right. But a close second is the lyrics more. So if the lyrics are really bad, they're going to stick out to me. And it's like, look, don't make me pay attention to the lyrics. That's the way I look at it. Don't make me pay attention to it. No, that's a fact. So like, when you think of that song, King's dead, right? The uh, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, yeah. From the black what, Panther. What, 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 what part of that song do you think of? What comes to mind? <laughs> what did I do? Exactly. <laughs> and it's not good, but also it's very memorable. Yeah. I think that's why they, I think that's why they got that. From my first reaction, at first I didn't, I didn't think that was uh, in the actual, so I heard it on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like a troll, like, like someone just <laughs> like trolling. I, I honestly did not think that was in the actual song. Yeah. And that's so funny to me. I, I remember I, I heard it when I was doing um, doing a podcast, actually. And we were playing like songs that debuted that week. And when it popped up, I started shaking my head. I was like, no, can we can we run that back a few seconds? I was like, I need to make sure I'm not bugging out over here. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. But I bet you that made them so much money, mm-hmm. especially playing that at shows. And that part come on. Oh, I'm back. The whole 50,000 people screaming that. Yeah, they're going to be singing to it because, you know, it's this memorable part about it. Um, all right. Uh, so now it's time for rapid fire. We're going to wrap up on these rapid fire questions. All right, let's get it. Let's go. What's shaking my constituency? Rob Lee here. And I want to tell you about something sweet. No, no, not just my sweet voice. And you'll get back to the podcast in a moment. But I want to tell you about one of my presenting sponsors for this month, Waffy Waffle. Do you like dessert? I hope you do. Do you like over the top dessert waffles? Well, Waffy is right up your alley. Waffy has yeast based waffles made with love and top with everything from syrup to sprinkles, you know, the regular stuff to ice cream and even cheesecake toppings. Treat yourself to something sweet today. Visit Waffy at www.waffywaffle.com and on Instagram at Waffy Waffle. And don't forget to tell them that Rob Lee sent you. All right. This is great. Because of because of what you're wearing right now, how many pairs of sunglasses do you own? Forty three. Uh, who would you most like to collaborate with? Pharrell Williams. What is your favorite song to perform? Joy. What, what was your first instrument? I think I know the answer, but do you still own said instrument? My first instrument was guitar, but I actually ended up. Uh, giving it away to um, somebody in my religious practice. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I was growing up, drove a witness, and it's called a Hawk, Kingdom Hall. Yeah. I, 
Yeah. When I say home, people don't know what I'm talking about. But basically, a church. Yeah. Uh, and one of the kids there wanted to play guitar, and I gave it to him. That's like uh, five years ago. <laughs> that's one of the things that uh, they talk about in Treme. It's like, man, we don't we don't carry these on. We give it to the next generation, so they can do their thing. Yeah. Um, and there, this this is gonna sound hokey and corny, but there's got to be some energy in that in that guitar, or what have you, some some musicality <laughs> or something that is transferred. I think that's yeah. the way it is. Energy is neither created nor destroyed; it's just exchanged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now this is this is the funny one. This is the last one based on what you said earlier. On average, how many hours of sleep do you get? <laughs> so I, told you, I had that question in there already. <laughs> I didn't even remember. I, I, I did go through it. I don't even remember that question being there. Uh, dang, I mean, how many? I think I don't even know. Like eight. Like, yeah, you're probably around. You're probably around eight. That's. I think eight is is good. And you take a couple of naps though. Yeah, you're a nap guy. Well, actually, today I woke up at five because they wanted the the Good Morning Baltimore people wanted me there super early. Um, I'm so, a musician. I don't get up that early, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be told waking up just a, just an hour earlier made me kind of exhausted today. I'll, uh, I'll I'll give you this. When all of those fireworks and stuff were happening uh, with last summer. Oh, my uh, God. I lasted it forever. And, and yeah. And, be, and this is before like 4th of July, like the, um, the June stuff. I got like five and a half hours of sleep on average a night. I was cranky. I was mad every day. And I was like, none of this is great because they would let him <laughs> off behind my, my house. And I was like, this sucks. Hey, yo. I was an angry podcast. I'm going to go back and listen to those episodes I recorded during those days. It's like, yo, I kept cussing at this person. Why was I doing that? <laughs> <laughs> no sleep. <laughs> Bro, that lasted like at least 10 months. Nine no, it was, it was, was lasting so long. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's all that i have for today and thank you thank you thank you but um please i want to invite you to um plug away anything that you have coming up um you, you touched on a tour earlier but um feel free to tell the fine folks where to find you where to see your to check out your work and any other thing that you want to um promote and thank you again for being on this podcast again yeah then well first thank you for having me because you definitely didn't have to do this but again this is the best podcast in the world. Much appreciate it. <laughs> That's where the bombs drop. If there's a DJ here. <laughs> uh, but I got uh, upcoming, upcoming, uh, yeah, I have a tour. So if you're here listening in Baltimore, January 22nd, I'm going to be at Creative Alliance. Let me actually pull up the flyer so I know what I'm talking about. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. You already know what I'm saying. Yeah, so January 2nd, Creative Alliance, New York on January 25th. We're going to be at Boris and Horton, uh, January 28th. We're going to be at Silver Spring at the Only Vibes. Yeah. Uh, February 3rd, we're at the City Winery in Fidley. And February 13th, we're at the Pie Shop in D.C. And also the Love Group application opens up sometime in early January. So if you're a photographer, if you're a videographer, a painter, literally whatever, you play an instrument, you sing, you rap, you know, please apply to the application. Um, yeah, we're just trying to work with new people every year. And all, all the jobs are, of course, compensated. So you will be paid for your services. And yeah, there's a lot coming. I'm working on a lot of different things. But I'm the type of person that's going to show you instead of tell you. So you will see in 2022. And, uh, when, and for them to keep track of what you've got going on, what is that Instagram again? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. John Tyler Sounds. And that website? JohnTylerSounds.com. Hell yeah. Also, folks, when you come out to the uh, January 22nd show um, at Creative Alliance, make sure you bring John his favorite cake. Maybe a cupcake. Just, just stop bringing cupcakes. His, his birthday is that week. You got to bring him a cupcake. What's, what's your flavor? What, what flavor cupcake you want, man? <laughs> yeah, this is the funniest thing. Uh, I love chocolate. Bring John a chocolate <laughs> cupcake. He'll play a cover of a Stevie Wonder song for you. Yes. I, yes, didn't, I, I just lied about that. I don't know what John's going to do. No, but I yeah. will do that. I will give you bring me a chocolate cupcake. I will definitely play you a Stevie Wonder cover. So again, for the super talented and just, just great, the great John Tyler. Thank you. And uh, this is Truth in this Art saying um, there's art in and around your city. You just got to look for it.